So, I wanted an excuse to show off the power of DaVinci Resolve, so I decided I would record the entirety of an edit I did. Uh, the most recent one, the Konosuba one, took me about 16 hours, roughly. I don't have about 2-3 to three hours of the footage, so it's kind of not fully known exactly how much time I spent because I wasn't that great at keeping up with it. But I just want to break down some of these edits and then show you the power of DaVinci in general on how I was able to achieve this in such a short amount of time with very little work on my part. This is the timeline, uh, the completed timeline of the video. And the biggest trick I want to show off here is just Magic Mask and DaVinci and how fantastic it is for anime in general. It has its issues. I definitely have to fight with it sometimes, and it's a little finicky. Any clip that I have above an adjustment layer is a masked shot, which if you look at all the blues, most of this has masking on it. So here I'm watching back some of the footage, and the basic concept for every single one of these shots utilizes Magic Mask, which is just, you add the tool in, you draw on the subject that you want, and there you go, it does the rest. It just works. Now, you have to tweak it a bit, it's just like Roto Brush, but there you go. This is a shot, there's no movement, very simple. Not really a problem. This is an easy shot, right? You got a just black background. So it's not like it's that big of a deal, but you can't delta key something like that because it only works with colors, but then you throw that on in and look at that it's crazy it just worked and then I'm gonna run it and it's just gonna process each frame and it's it's flawless there's a bit of wiggle in the hair as it renders but if you add a little bit of feathering lower the threshold just a bit you can't tell especially if you're throwing on a enough movement in the background and stuff so you can't see the outline this doesn't work for every shot, but I don't have to be that selective when choosing my shots because there's an entire angel I cut out and I thought it was going to be impossible and it just worked. This is a more complicated shot just because I had to cut it into several layers to get the effect I wanted. So while this plays out at two times speed, I'm just going to talk about the process I went through to make the video, which is pretty much my creative process for everything I make, which is a purely linear edit. I pretty much start from the beginning and just keep going through the song. I very rarely skip ahead to a section to edit that first unless I just have a really good idea for that moment. Whatever I do at the beginning of the edit is going to change what I do later in the edit. And I don't know how common that is for everyone. I feel like some people maybe jump around a bit more and do it in sections and leave little gaps. I very rarely leave a gap as I'm editing unless it's like a filler scene until I find something better. Or I'm just like, this is good enough for now. It it does what I want and I'll fix it later. For this edit specifically too, I wanted to use a bunch of glitch effects, which by the end of the edit is when I actually start adding those. And those are pretty much all just block glitch fusion transitions. I just use stock fusion transitions. I tweak them a little bit, but for the most part, a lot of them are just, yeah, just drag and dropped from the left side. But I wouldn't place the clip side by side so that it wouldn't actually transition between the two scenes. It would just apply the blocky glitch effect onto the scene I wanted, typically the background, so that I could glitch the background and leave the character in the front, which also helped hide a bunch of the jank on some of the cuts. Like this one, the very beginning of it, it looks awful, so I fade it in. Because if I have it as it was, it doesn't look good. The rest of it looks good, it's just those first few frames are not very good looking. And here I just rearrange everything, I want the sword to be over the bottom, but I want him to be behind it. But yeah, this is Magic Mask. This is the power of Magic Mask and how easy you can accomplish this style without putting in almost any work. It's, it's insane to me how well this functions. When I first purchased DaVinci Resolve, I did not realize I was gaining access to the most powerful tool ever. 
where I would never have to manually mask ever again. So this is probably the most complicated shot I did that included still using Magic Mask, which I accomplished by cutting out the character, creating it a 3D image plane, rendering that out and using a 3D camera in the scene to go through him so that he would be flying at the screen. Might have been a better way of doing it, but this was the idea I came up with, and then I just added a green screen behind him, I delta keyed that out, and then I flew the camera through it. And then after I delta keyed it, I just placed it underneath him and under the black bars so that it would add a, like, effect while he was screaming. And then I slowed it down a bit so that it wasn't going through the full thing, and then I added digital glitch. Done. Now it looks like he kind of glitches outward. Could have accomplished that a lot easier somehow, but hey, it looked good. Yeah, I don't have too much to show off in this. I don't want to break down every shot because most of them are the same thing. It's just me layering a character over an adjustment layer, which is cropping the scene under it. That's it. That's the whole effect. Every once in a while, I'll leave a bar over a character. Sometimes that's to hide the mask just fighting me and not wanting to function how I work, want. But a lot of the time, it's not so much it messing up, it's more just the effect looked better if they weren't over both bars. It always looked weird for a character to just suddenly appear over both of them, but them only appearing over the top bar and like coming out of the bottom, it still gives you the 3D effect without looking strange and suddenly like popping out at you. It worked fine if a character was already over the bars and then the next scene they were as well, or someone else was. But say this section right here, I have Aqua and Kazuma both staying behind the bottom bar and above the top bar. So with that said, uh, hope you learned something about how good DaVinci can be. You should use this program. Magic Mask is not free though. I will say you have to pay for the software or, you know, get the software somehow. Don't pay for it like me to make AMVs. It's a bad idea. But I don't regret it. It was worth it. Honestly, DaVinci could sponsor me at this point. I would sing their praises till the end of time. This software is fantastic, does not have a subscription service of any kind, and it just works.